Well, hello, everyone. Today, we still are hearing from Jesus' Last Supper discourse with his disciples. So think this is Jesus' final farewell to them. He's trying to tell them everything that they should know. And we hear him give a commandment that's very similar to one that he's already given, that great commandment to love. And he says that is the greatest commandment when he is asked earlier in the gospel or in the other gospels, when he's asked, what is the greatest commandment? When he says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. So that is the greatest commandment, almost like two commandments given in one. Or you can't say the first without also mentioning the second. But now he says this. He says, to love one another as I have loved you. That is a new level of love, something that's even added more to what he's already said. Because how has Jesus loved his disciples? How has he loved the world? He's loved them to the point of giving himself up for us, to giving his very life for us. He says, right after this, he says, no greater love has the, a person than to lay down his life for his friends. That's how we're called to love as Christians. And oftentimes it's the, the way that we fail to love because we're not willing to give up our own ideas, our own ways of thinking, the ways that we want to make things happen. I think that this can really play out, especially in relationships. And um, one way that I see it play out in a good way is in marriages. Uh, recently, I was on the online class that I take for Encounter Ministries. That's a great way to grow in spiritual gifts if you are looking to do that. I'll, I'll tell you more if you'd like to know. But um, we were talking about leading from vocation in our class and how we have to lead with love within our vocation. So our vocation, our state in life. So for me, the, the best way I can, I can lead is through my vocation. To, to the best way I can evangelize and show people Jesus is not just because I'm a priest, but because that is the way that God has called me, the state of life God has called me to. And, and in, in that, then I can show forth his love in the greatest way. Well, if that's true for married people as well, that's the best way that they can show forth God's love. And I was listening to one of my classmates speak, and I was just very inspired. I'm usually inspired by married people. And he said, you know, the, the best days or the worst days for me in my marriage are when I wake up thinking about all the things that I have to do, all the things that I want to get done. And what that means is he's not thinking about his wife or he's not thinking about how they are going to do things together that he has to put himself second in that relationship in a sense. Or he has to always leave room for making decisions together. Now, I'm not married, but I, that's a really inspiring thing to me because it tells me the same sort of thing is true for every relationship. We have to let ourselves be second. We have to love to the point that who I am has, can die a little bit, my ideas, my ways of thinking, so that others can grow and flourish and that we can come to things together. This is what Jesus, I mean, that's just one way of doing it. It can mean actually that we love to the point of our physical death. And we may be called to that. Jesus calls us to love one another as he has loved us. To love to the point that it's not about me anymore. It's, it's not even about my own life. I wish the life of the other. Let's ask for that grace today so that Jesus and his love might flow through us each and every day of our lives.